today we're going to i'm going to talk a little bit about me who i am why i'm here i'm actually traveling but i have to be here i'm in spain as you can see it's dark <laughs> um but i wanted to make the time to be with the tequeria people because i love this you know this community i love collaborating and i love working with um latinx in tech so I'm going to share a little bit about myself and then we'll get into some of the details about mindfulness uh, of our Latina leadership. But uh, before we do that, I wanted to share a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Chris Cuervo and I spent over a decade uh, working in the telecom industry, which is part of the tech industry in, um, in places like Dish Latino, Telemundo, ESPN. So uh, it was amazing, an amazing journey. However, in 2016, I decided I needed to take a break. I needed to change and make a shift uh, because I, I used to travel a lot for work and I started to see that there were many, many people that I was working with that had a lot of hard skills, very tech savvy, but then in the soft skills area, they were lacking a lot of tools. I was doing a lot of the research myself to develop my own soft skills and i just kept seeing like why are these skills are not being taught in corporate or with teams so i decided in 2016 to to take a, a, a step a, a side step and learn about mindfulness learn about emotional intelligence so i got a master's degree and i got a certification to do this and since then i've been uh, doing a lot of work with companies and with teams and with individuals, just giving them the tools and the soft skills that we need to help us th thrive as Latinx um, leaders, current or future leaders. So um, all of my studies turned into a book. So I also have a book called Pertenecer. It's available on Amazon. And it's basically uh, all the tools with a culture attunement, uh, just taking into consideration our values and our traditions in the practice of mindfulness and meditation and also learning about our emotions. So this is my gift to the community. Uh, I wish I had access to this when I was younger. So I hope that uh, you can take advantage of these tools as well if you're not able to do the work with me or someone that is in this field as well. So today, I would like to continue to hear more in the chat. I see there are some people uh, joining. I want to hear your heritage, where you, where your ancestors or you come from. We are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, so I am excited to just see all of our diversity within our community. Guatemala, Me Mexico. I am half Colombian, half Venezuelan. Honduras, Cubano. <laughs> nice. Colombia, Mexico, Mexican, Bolivian, Mexican, Colombiana. Welcome, everyone. Yeah. So I want to share my screen so we can take a look. I don't know what I'm going to talk about right now. Let me make this big for you. So I want to invite you right now for a second to think, even if you're not in a leadership position, who am I as a leader? And there are many things to take in consideration in leadership. I already shared a little bit about myself and in the roles that I had where I had this position of leadership, when, when I say leadership, I mean being in a position where you're influencing others. So many times we may not have the title, but we are in a position of influencing decisions in others, and that's leadership. So some of the things that, that I never took into consideration, and then when I started to do a lot of my research and my own preparation and my own work, I started to make everything start to make sense. Because sometimes we don't take the step back to, to, to look at ourselves as a leader. So what is our intention? So understanding where we come from, our positionality, our intersectionality that we're talking about a lot in here in this, in this conference. So what are my degrees of privilege? Even if we don't 
believe that we come from privilege because I certainly did not. We do have had higher access to many, if we look at our world and look at our parents, perhaps that didn't go to college or maybe they didn't finish high school. Myself, you know, I have one parent that did not finish high school and another one that only, you know, did go to college, but not in the United States. So we, all of these things shape who we are and shape our experiences too and how we respond in life. We have a very different road than most people as Latinx. Uh, you know, we come to the United States, some of us as immigrants like myself, some of you first generation, second generation, but there's always some type of impact on where we come from and the support that we have and the support systems that we have around us. So it's, you know, in the process of doing, developing our soft skills, as I mentioned at the beginning, to help us thrive, we do have to take a step back and look within ourselves. And today I'll give you some initial steps uh, to start to do that if you haven't started to do that. So again, uh, another thing is the impact. So just kind of like taking a moment to consider our knowledge. That's epistemology, right? How do I know what I know? Where does it come from? What are we exposed to? Again, they're all interconnected. And these are things that I, I would invite you to take some time and reflect, and perhaps you can take a screenshot and just do some writing after the session because we are in a very short session. And the last one is the care part, which I have focused a lot in the last years. And just how are you fulfilling your heart and your passions? And not only that, but also that's where emotional intelligence comes in. Emotional intelligence is a huge skill that now with artificial intelligence coming in is something that is very hard to be replaceable. And it's something that each individual, each of you, has but we have to kind of like help uncover it and i always talk about emotional intelligence developing our emotional intelligence as the process of dating ourselves and getting to know ourselves which is very important and getting to know our values our strengths our weaknesses what are our, um, our tendencies how do we react when something goes wrong all these things happen at work and more when we're in a leadership position, when we're making decisions. How do we react when things go wrong? How do we react when we're under pressure? And knowing our tendencies and knowing um, also our strengths can help us navigate the complex, the complexity of being in the tech industry as a minority and also just being in a leadership position. So um, I'm going to invite you to do some reflection with me right now. And I'm going to go to the next screen here. And I want you to read, read this and just take a moment and consider what does it say to you right now in regards to your role that you have at this moment in, in the current state where you are in your career. Nadie sabe lo que hay en la olla más que la cuchara que la menea. Nobody knows what's inside the pot, only the spoon that is mixing it. So how this is, if you want to share in the chat, does it say anything to you in this moment? And many things can come up in this as you are taking this reflection. No one knows more about you than yourself, Ingrid, yes. And there's no wrong answer here. It, it can speak to any of us in many different ways. I'll give everybody a little bit if anybody wants to share. To add to Ingrid, it's also true in the work we are doing day to day. Yes, nobody knows, yes. Thank you, Alicia. No one knows what went into a creation other than its creator. Yes, era, am I saying that right, era? 
No one knows what's in that salsa recipe more than Abuelita. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because I want to lead towards self-awareness and mindfulness. That's the, the base of every, every new way of leading because there are, other, there are many ways to lead. But the new emerging ways to lead teams and lead projects and lead uh, organizations is this human-centered way through the use of emotional skills. But how can we develop those and know, really know what's happening here? Because if we don't know what's happening in here, it's really hard to really empathize, connect, inspire others. So the first steps we, start, we have to do first is realize that most of us live in the autopilot. And what is autopilot? Autopilot that we live in the past, thinking about what happened, or in the future, worrying about what could happen, or planning the future. We live very distracted, and this is, you know, a very fast-paced world, and less aware because we have so many distractions, so many planning and things happening in our minds. And we act based on our patterns and assumptions most of the time because we're not very aware. And I can tell you that this happened to me and, and it happens still sometimes. So being an autopilot is not unhealthy. We also need it as human beings. But when we are in autopilot too much, it takes from us our ability to really be engaged and present. So what's the answer to help us get out of autopilot? You know, myself, I remember uh, driving to work 20 years ago and just not even realizing that I was driving and getting home and just being in shock, like, oh, how did I get home? Uh, it happens also in the shower when we are showering and we don't know if we are putting shampoo on because we're thinking about the meeting or a project and we're just completely here and not really present brushing our teeth. It happens all the time. And even it happens when we're in meetings with our teammates and we just go off thinking about something and we completely miss what we were talking about. And this is completely normal. It's happening a lot because you know, we live in a very fast pace and there's a lot of over-connectivity. I am a fan of technology. But sometimes the technology, it's leading us to be very, very distracted. So using technology to an advantage, is, uh, I am a fan of that. But mindfulness is basically what can help us to stay more in the present moment, focus more, be more aware, and pause before we react, and pause before we make big decisions. So... Do we have many meditators here before I move on to the next slide? I would love to hear in the chat. Yes to pronunciation. <laughs> Thanks, Era. Thank you. Jose, could there be multiple spoons? Do we need to be careful whose spoon is being used in our pot? That's a great question, Jose. Oh. You know... And you're talking there about boundaries. Um, and I don't want to get too much too too deep into this, but we live if you know we come from uh, in our Lat Latinx community, we are highly collectivist. So most of the decisions are made as a group, as a family. Uh, it, we have like our small networks, uh, our parents, our sisters, our uncles and aunts. It depends, you know, what family, uh, how big is the circle. Sometimes it involves uncles, cousins. Sometimes it's just the parents and the siblings. Uh, and they have a lot to say, you know, <laughs> when it comes to our decisions, you know, and, and what we, you know, which way we move forward. Um, so, yeah, so that's something that <laughs> I do a lot of work with uh, in our community. It's like set, setting healthy boundaries because sometimes there can be other spoons <laughs> in 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 our in our pot and and the question is is it supporting uh our work is it supporting 
who we want to be, our passions, as I said at the beginning, so supporting uh, the passions and the things that we care about. And if it's not, that's when we have to start to considering creating healthy, healthy limits. So I want to continue by saying that in this process, what we are developing through mindfulness. So again, connecting everything, all the dots here. Mindfulness as our Latine in our Latine leadership, right? Either we are currently leading or we are wanting to lead. And it's crucial, crucial that we develop our self-awareness. But self-awareness cannot be developed unless we are aware that we live on autopilot and that we have to be more aware. And we can do that through, through many practices. There are many practices. One of them is meditation, but there are many ways that you can try to develop your self-awareness. So what is self-awareness? It's information about the self. And in the leadership contest, it has to be, uh, it's what people, what would you think you are? The leader's self-description description, and the follower's description of the leader's behavior. So what I think I am, and what people see is a matching. Sometimes we, we think we, we portray ourselves as one way, but then how do people perceive us? And also it is about being moving from existential to experiential. So when we start to develop our process of, as I said at the beginning, dating ourselves, getting to know ourselves, because we have to get to know ourselves so we can influence others better, connect with, with others better. We have to also understand that we are beings that experience things. For example, I am, I am, I become, I am that person versus I experience anger. So it takes some work. It takes, uh, you know, quite a bit of work to to get to the, the the stage where you can separate emotions as something that are coming and just alive in you that you cannot control to becoming someone that can experience emotions and still allow yourself to make decisions to respond in wiser ways and and that's why it's so important as leaders um we're gonna have the, the the higher we go the more pressure we have on the decisions that we make and how many people it affects so our emotions are so important i'm not saying that we have to disregard them but you have to we have to learn how to use the information that they give us in a way that is, it creates an advantage for us as leaders. And we can only do that through developing our self-awareness. So I know I've said a lot of things today, but I just want to make sure that what you take away from this session is that to be able to thrive my advice from the work that I've done and that I do with many teams and many individuals and that I've done myself is that we have to work on ourselves so we can navigate this complex environments where we're most of the time we are the minority. And we, as I, I tell most of my uh, uh, the people that I work with, I tell them we have to create a shield that allows us to navigate these places not close us, but it gave us the tools so we can overcome and become more resilient because we're going to hit a lot of hurdles. And it's not easy, but we have the tools and we have the shield that, that can protect us. And that's what you were doing when we're cultivating these practices of developing our emotional awareness, emotional intelligence, our self-awareness and mindfulness. I would love to leave this five minutes for questions. Uh, so I'm going to stop sharing right now. Well, I'm going to teach you this short practice that you can take away with you. So this is called the three breaths. And usually people do it before a meeting, before a call, 
uh, just before anything important. Um, and it's basically taking three deep breaths and you're gonna inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. And I invite you to lower your gaze if you wanna try it or close your eyes. And I will guide it. So we'll do three deep breathing and I'll close my eyes. And if you want, you can do the same. Nobody's looking, you're in your space. Take a deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. One more time, deep breath, inhale. And exhale through the mouth. Relax the shoulders. Last one. Breathe in. And breathe out through the mouth. And just start to wiggle your toes. Feel your feet on the ground. Return your breath to a normal rhythm. And then move the head side to side. Start to open the eyes again. And that's a very, very short practice. We tend to have a lot of tension in our shoulders and um, it always is good to do it before any meeting. Thank you everyone for being here. I con will continue my travels, but I am so glad that I joined all of you and hope you continue to enjoy the last part of the of this conference thank you everyone for joining